Hi everybody, welcome to our meeting with Abdul um, Yusuf, who is the club assurance consultant at the Premier League. Okay, I know we've been doing some discussions with people from the Premier League already with different job roles, so Abdul's another part of that. Um, how are you doing, Abdul? You all right? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Thanks a lot. Um, so just in regard to the young people that are listening, we're going to be aiming for the ages of 14 to 16 so that um, or even a bit older and they just want to understand people's career pathways and how they felt about school and where they went so if we work backwards a little bit um can you give us a description of your job role please what's its purpose and what does a general working week look like for you um so i've had many roles in the premier league so i've been there for five years now um first i started off as an event consultant uh which was uh, to help out on the tournament festivals with the academies on the weekends the other day here and there and i was also studying at university uh and then um a year two years later uh, i joined the guest program team and i was uh, working first and um planning and tournaments um, as in like planning hotels transport uh, the qualifiers for the teams um just everything in general and that was a brilliant experience and now because of um COVID guidelines and uh, COVID rules. Uh, I work as a club assurance consultant, and uh, my role is uh, uh, to make sure the clubs have a safe environment uh, for um, the game to kick off and go ahead. So I'll be going into uh, numerous clubs uh, with, uh, throughout the country, and uh, I'll be checking their practices. Um, have to get enough PPE. Um, I have to get tested regularly um, from uh, making sure uh, that all the staff and the players feel safe. Mm -hmm. Is that is that just Premier League clubs? Is it the twenty Premier League clubs, or do you do EFL as well? Uh, only, only the Premier League clubs, and uh, so I'll give an example. Uh, for the week, um, on a Monday, I might go into uh, Tottenham, and then uh, on a Wednesday, I might be at Chelsea, just uh, speaking to the manager, speaking to the staff, um, observing their um, COVID guidelines, and just be there to support uh, to make sure they get everything in place, and um, we can continue the season. And again, bring live football to you guys and watch at home in um, special times like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. Uh... Especially for me, I was getting really bored when there was no football on, and especially when we were in lockdown and uh, yeah. everything going on. And I know when when it came back, that was especially for my friends as well. It wasn't so much a, uh, um, it was just because we didn't have anything to do. So then yeah. we were like, as soon as football came back, I give you something to look forward to, and because of the consistency of it, you kind of catered your days around it. So you were like, right, I'm going to do work nine to five, and then at seven o'clock, I'm going to watch the football, and then it give you another um, communication aspect with your friends, so I would just drop my message and go, are you watching the game, we talk about it, it's another talking element, which was really good, um, so we appreciate your role, thank you very much. Yeah, um, but uh, again, it's, uh, it's come down to uh, everyone at the Premier League and the clubs being so supportive, and the government as well, for allowing us to come back, and um, again, I hope everyone who um, is a fan of football or takes uh, uh, inspiration of football enjoys the time that um, they watch football. Yeah, hundred percent. It's another talking avenue. It's entertainment value to the max. Um, football brings people together. I've always said it, regardless of race, nationality, where you're from, uh, yeah. who you are. Football brings a lot of people together. Um, yeah. So I think, and, and especially over this year, it's been needed. It's been really needed. Yeah. And and also as well uh, with the Premier League, they do a lot of charitable charitable work. So uh, the Premier Charitable Trust work with uh, all the clubs around the country and giving them funding to uh, like yourselves right now, Peel Inspires, Peel Kicks, and uh, with that, them kind of programs. Um, um, well, how would the world look like today? I came through the Premier League Kicks program um, as a as a participant at West Ham Foundation, and uh, that was a brilliant experience for me. So, but we'll go. We'll talk about it more later. As the yeah, is coming 100%. Well. But yeah, I um, I just want to advocate what you've just said there in terms of um, the Premier League Child Fund is a brilliant organisation, and it's, and it's and for me, I coordinate inspires. I know obviously Primary Stars and Kicks valuable, valuable work within the community. And if that money wasn't there, um, and if them job roles weren't there, it would be scary thought in terms of what would be going on in society so we do offer a lot of great deals but yes we'll touch that um, touch on that coming on but in terms of your education um do you want to just talk us through it? how did you find education um i know your story is a little bit different in terms of everybody else's so if you want to just go go through that um so i went to lots of different schools um i was born in somalia i went to school uh, in uh, belgium and syria and then uh, i came to england when i was about 10 years old uh, school was very tough for me. Um, uh, English was my fourth language that I've learned. So uh, again, having that motivation to um, learn, engage with uh, my, my fellow uh, classmates, um, it was really, really tough. Uh, I had to um, attend the EAL classes, so English was an additional language. Mm -hmm. um, that was really helpful. Uh, um, and I, I thank the teachers in school for giving me the time and effort and um, giving me the booster sessions. 
in, in uh, school. Don't, don't be embarrassed. Don't be afraid of um, asking for help because uh, uh, everyone's there to support you and they want the best interest of, um, for you. Mm-hmm. No, that's brilliant. But what's the four languages, if you don't mind asking? English? Uh, Somali, um, Flemish, because I'm a Belgian citizen, and then um, I speak Arabic as well. Smart guy, smart guy. <laughs> uh, you can travel the world with him. Um, excellent. In terms of the difficult times, do you want to go into a bit of detail of why you found it difficult? How, how did you overcome the difficult times within, it, within the education environment? Um, so, um, again, um, when I first started school, um, I couldn't speak to anyone. I don't know how to communicate. So, again, there was a lot of silence. Uh, a lot of uh, just pointing and um, it, it, it is tough uh, it takes a lot of, a lot of courage for you uh, to come out and embrace the new language uh, again it wasn't only English I had to learn I had to learn Arabic and uh, when, I, when I lived in Belgium for a couple of years again um, um, learned Flemish but um, again it, it taught me uh, uh, to never give up and be, be resilient and, and in regards to no matter where you are in life, the environment you're from doesn't dictate uh, where you will go. Uh, as long as you uh, just ask for help, uh, you're willing to learn and um, be on time all the time. Um, show that courage that I, I want this opportunity and I will grab it with both hands. Uh, don't think you're too cool or you tell like, you know what, um, nah, I'm, I, don't want, I don't want to do that. Take the chance because that one day you'd be like, you know what, I found that person for giving me the chance. No, brilliant advice. Excellent. Well done. Um, don't be too cool for it. Just just work hard and, and hope for the best. And I think that's really important for any any young person to hear, but especially people that have a similar background to yours, and especially people that um, come from a come from a side of the, 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 a bit of a tougher upbringing in the sense of they've got to learn a lot more than everybody else just because of their sur- surroundings and just because of where they've come from. Um, I think that's really valuable and and a, and a great insight. And I think that um, just from reflecting on what you're saying has, has provided you with a lot more motivation to be a success and it's provided you with a with a strong background of watch me do this now because four languages in that in itself is is a lot of learning and, and and especially when you were young and constantly moving and adapting it shows that you're willing to learn and you've got the background of um there's evidence there there's evidence that you've learned yeah. just from your yeah. life story so yeah um i think when, when you're saying that education is important and when we talk about education we're not just talking about mass English science history that kind of thing we're talking about life education yeah working within society and meeting different people and talking to them and being able to understand how to engage with them yeah um definitely life is uh uh throughout the adapt- adaptations of experiences you have so uh, again um you, you might have not uh, had a good initial start to life but um again just seek support and keep going and have the courage to believe in yourself um um, believe in yourself that there is a, a law of Oslov where if you believe that you can achieve something you'll find ways of achieving it uh, yeah. whereas if you don't feel like um, you'll achieve um, something you want because you'll give yourself excuse to not um, achieve it so honestly just have a positive mindset um, it will take you a long way no, brilliant advice thank you for that um, in terms of if we just touch on support networks within within school which, you, which we've, you've just talked about who would be what support networks did you have that made you go on and be educated a lot more and achieve and, and be able to integrate in uh, school society, but society in general outside of school as well. What support networks was there for you? Uh, so definitely um, in school, I had the EEL, I had teach assistants, I had a PE staff, which I got on really well. Um, um, sport was a big way for me uh, to express uh, my talents, but well, not, not talents, but my uh, commitment to, um, to work hard and uh, be resilient. Um, again, um, outside of um, school, uh, I went to lots of youth clubs where um, I um, spoke to um, many people from different backgrounds, um, helped me with my English as well. And also as well, um, when I got to about 15, 16, I started attending the kick sessions at um, the West Ham Foundation. Uh, and again, I was lucky enough to be enrolled in their um, college scheme programme. And at, at the time, I thought uh, this might give me a chance to join the academy, but it was far from it. Um, it was a good scheme, as in uh, it helped me do my BTEC and I uh, um, learned how a club functions, especially a foundation. Mm-hmm. And uh, I remember um, one person, his name was Sham, who was like, um, he came to us and said, um, I'll offer you a six week program uh, where you come volunteer and uh, you can come and up uh, kicks uh, uh, sessions or um, uh, MOPAC sessions and you can volunteer and see how it looks like. And then if you do well, you can, you know, uh, do your level one and then uh, again, hopefully get a paid. Um, employment out of it 
I, I was the only one that turned up after uh, out of about 30. And I was like, wow, well, um, again, I can't believe um, you, you, uh, you come up, you, can't, you came and took, took it up on my offer. So I said, yeah, I want, again, um, I don't know where I'm going in my life. I am just finished out my BTEC in a couple of years. And um, I, lo I love helping people. And uh, again, through sport, you can, speak, you can engage with many young people, uh, regardless of uh, if they've got disability or um, uh, women and girls football, just everything, just, just go and do it. And I, I want to take it all in. And then, uh, yeah, and I thank him very much because if it wasn't for him, I don't know where I'll be today. Mm -hmm. no, yeah. I think it's great to hear that. Um, from, from my side of understanding that is you just took the opportunity and look what's happened. Um, whereas 29 other people didn't. Yeah. You, you, you shown up. We've spoke about it in the other chats as well. Of 70% of, of any success, I believe, is showing up. You show mm. up and then the other 30% takes care of itself because you meet new people, you do the job, you do different things. Um, and the fact that you showing up is led to where you are today. So that no, that's that's really good. But and, also, Jazz, I want to say is be on time. And I don't I don't mean by uh lesson starts at nine o'clock or you have to be there for nine. No, be there at 8.45. Um, show that uh, I, I am here, I am serious. Because if you come late, you're already implying that my time is better than yours. Yeah. So, and the first impressions really, really, really count. And uh, as in your appearance, uh, dress well, um, um, speak confident, uh, and um, don't be using any slang as in, uh, or already straight up people like, oh, he hasn't got many, he or she hasn't got many vocabulary. Really. So again, uh, um, be smart and also your pleas and thank yous because that will take you a long way. 100% Manus, um, I'm glad you mentioned that, Manus takes you, Manus takes you for something that costs nothing, um, yeah. but will get you a long way. Um, in terms of your personal journey from school to your current role, and you've touched on it in regards to the KICKS programme and things like that, I just want to briefly recap that, so you left school 16 and then and then what did we do? Um, so uh, until I was about 18, I worked for West Ham Foundation doing numerous projects, leading uh, on a um, uh, the women and girls to uh, taking a uh, team to uh, the London Youth Games to uh, uh, the kicks and PL Forest sessions, and I loved it. But I wanted, I wanted more, uh, so uh, um, I went to go work for a um, uh, SEN um, unit. So again, it's for uh, special education needs, and that's where I think I learned a lot. Where um, I worked with uh, kids who have ADHD uh, and, and behavioural uh, behavior difficulties, and um, again, it shows that. Um, you have to be patient in life. Um, you, you may think um, you haven't got, uh, you, have, you have a good start in life, but um, when you see um, other kids, uh, especially with disabilities, um, again, you're like, oh, wow, I am very lucky. Um, um, yeah, and, and it was a brilliant, brilliant um, um, time of my life where I was like, I've done that for a year and I was 19. Um, I went to university. Uh, I was like, I, I, want to, I might become a teacher, I want to become a teacher. So I, I went to university, uh, then a two years financial degree, um, and then I done a top up degree, which I gave me my bachelor's. Um, and at that time, luckily, I saw an advert at the Premier League saying, uh, junior event consultants part time, literally two days a month, uh, helping out in events. I was like, you know what, what have I got to lose? I applied for it. And then once, once I got in, I was like, you know what, um, I want to work for the Premier League. But working for the Premier League started when I was at West Ham. So uh, I attended a kick session in 2014 at Hackney Marshes and uh, I saw the Premier League branding all in your face. Like, uh, uh, and I was like, wow. And then again, it was a, it was a big, big marketing. Um, uh, people were there, videos, Sky Sports. Um, again, um, the staff who were organising the tournament were brilliant from like the running of games. And I was like, wow, I want to work for the Premier League. So that's, that's where I was like, from a teenager, I want to work. For, I want to see how they run because uh, you see Premier League, but you don't see many people. Like, how how do I get there? How, um, how how do these people work for this uh, such a global brand? I, I want to be part of it. Um, so again, it became it became my mission. And then when I did get a part time junior event consultant role, um, I was like, I'm gonna be. If I have to clean tables, I'm gonna be the best uh, table cleaner, the best uh, person to clean the toilets. If I have to pick up a team from the airport, I make sure they um. They have that fantastic time with me where they asked me, oh, we want Abdul back because my team lays on. Um, I was determined, I was so determined and hungry to uh, show them um, I am ready, like um, I am, I've got potential and just give me a chance and uh, I will take it. No, that's excellent. And in, in terms of the mentality, you can see that, that do whatever your job is, just do it at the best of your ability, regardless of what that is. Don't treat any, yeah. don't be any different just because you've made it. So start yeah. from the bottom and do it the best. And then it, everything looks after itself once you do the right things always. Um, so like you and said, just yeah, sorry. Let's come back to your point again. Is 
do everything right. So again, that, that, that comes from home, setting your alarm, getting your books the night before, um, being, being a champion at home, taking pride in that, because then everything else falls into place really easily while you then turn up on time to work. And then uh, your mind is in how you just, even you offer someone before you get yourself a drink, or would you like a drink? You know, show that empathy. Love that. Be a champion at home. Love that. Yeah. And then you're yeah. a champion outside. And that's yeah. any, any gender, any race, any religion, whatever you are, whatever age yeah. you are, you start early, you get, you, or you start whenever you can, you can create your own destiny as such. Um, and we briefly touched on that with Neil when we were talking and Neil was obviously came through the academy system and he wanted to play in the Premier League. And I, and I mentioned to Neil that um, you don't play in the Premier League, but you work for the Premier League. So it's funny how things work out. So his vision when he was 16 was, I'm going to be in the Premier League. He's in the Premier League now. Do you know what I mean? So it's funny how life works mm. because he's, he, mm. his vision became a thing because he's constantly worked hard. He's treated people right. He spoke well. His aura has always been correct. Um, so And he's and he brought people along with him. And, and I, I, I sense that you've got the same kind of mentality in the sense of <clears throat> the hard work, but also the because people can work hard but not treat people nice. Um, and that's yeah. where it falls down. So yeah. you can always look after yourself, but be a bit of a... Not, not treat people as well as you meant to but if you do if you work your socks off but treat people well around you you'll be fine you'll be and fine. Jazz we spoke about this as well where um, one of my uh, values in life is uh, and the, the principle I try to live by every day is um, it's important to be uh, uh, it's nice to be important but it's important to be nice mm -hmm. um, and that will that will take you a long way yeah totally agree totally agree yeah, um, yeah. In, in terms of when you were a child or in a teenager what was the job role you always wanted to do and why you touched on teacher was that always, was that always the thing? Um, again, uh, I wanted to be a footballer, but I was nowhere near good enough. And I'm not going to give any excuses. I, I, was, I wasn't good. Um, all the coaches would say, uh, Abdul, you work very hard. Um, you, you, collect, you collect the balls after training. Uh, you show that good uh, attitude. But it clicked with me where I'm not going to make it. So I was like, you know what? Let me try to become a teacher. And then I went to university. But now, um, um, again, I, <laughs> This sounds a bit cliche, but I've, um, since 16, I always want to talk to the Premier League. Now I'm here. I love it. And um, it's my passion uh, to present the brand. And um, it's, a, it's, a real, it's a real honour to work for the Premier League. Um, again, I've got some ideas where when I was a teenager, I, um, I went to work in the office, a busy environment where I want a job that I want to travel mm -hmm. a, a lot, meet lots of people from different backgrounds. Um, and I'm lucky. I'm lucky. I am, I, I am in this role. Well, that's, that's brilliant. And I think yeah. um, it's clear to see that. It's really clear to see that. And it's, I think, looking from the outside, looking in, obviously, um, we engage with the Premier League constantly due to, due to funding and things like that. And a lot of our stuff, even though the football club's in, in, in a different league at the minute, the Premier League have always been good to us. But I think the, the reason that the Premier League holds such esteem is because of its standards. It's because of how it holds itself in society and in the world. So the Premier League's looked on as really successful, but it's because it does things right. Um, <clears throat> one of my previous managers always used to say to me that um, don't, and, and, it, and it always stuck with me when I started at Sunderland, it was always like, don't forget what the badge represents, so make sure yep. your behaviours match the badge, so when it comes to yep. Sunderland Football Club, it's like, it's of honour it's a hard work, this is a really hard working society in the North East um, yep. we, we, we work hard for our money to then go and enjoy the football on the weekend, it's like, don't forget the people you're representing so when we go into a classroom it's because their dads and their mums love the badges because their grandparents love the badges. The reason that they're engaging with us because they're, they're going to become future people that follow someone. Yeah. So it's always like, and, don't forget, don't forget, and, uh, don't forget the behaviours that are very high. And Jazz, you talk about representing the badge. Um, everyone in life, uh, when you walk out uh, in the streets, um, first and uh, foremost, you're representing your, your parents' names. Um, but also as well, um, I know some people uh, may not have... Uh, uh, parents, uh, you might be represent representing your guardian, mm -hmm. or, or most importantly, you're representing yourself, mm -hmm. uh, watching your heart, watching your soul. So uh, bear, bear that in mind when you're when you're out and about and you're doing stuff. Totally agree. Totally agree. Um, in terms of your journey, is very inspiring and brilliant here. How far you've come from from um, from different countries and, and and engaging in different systems and being being very adaptable. What comes across, you're very adaptable and you, you can adapt quite fast. Um, your mentality comes across really well as well. What motivates you to be successful, or who motivate, who inspires you to achieve? Um, I say um, myself, the people around me. But it's because I've lived in so many different countries, and uh, I lived in Syria, I lived in Somalia, Somalia, I lived in Saudi Arabia. I've seen the living the living standards there, mm -hmm. and um, it's not as um, good as uh, as England. 
Mm-hmm. And um, it's, it's that, that fear of uh, not going to live back to those standards. Um, again, um, what I've worked with is uh, my family, uh, my partner as well. Um, again, just um, t- to give my kids what, what, I, what I never had, but also as well, um, having that fine line of where um, don't give them too much, but don't give them too little, just give them that guidance. Um, yeah, that's what that's what inspires me. And again, I want I love helping people. I want to give back. So when I get to a stage where like um or, or even if I can at any time, I just help people through um uh just talking to them, um, meetings, um uh, just having that chat. You know, how yeah. how are you? Okay, how's your day? Especially in climates we're in now, show empathy. Hundred percent. I totally agree. I think um and and something I always try to get across to the young people is personalities are very infectious. So if you've got a yeah. if you've got a negative personality that'll rub off on you. If you've got a pers- if you've got a positive personality that'll rub off as well. So make sure yeah. you've got the personality that you want to be, because um, then that'll spread to everybody that you engage with also. Um, and 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 Chaz, coming back to that point, be beware of the, the people you surround yourself with, because um, if you surround yourself with uh, people who get in trouble, uh, then uh, more likely you'll end up down that path. Whereas if you people you um, signs of people who are ambitious who are in good roles and uh you just want the best and are good people then uh you'll you'll be heading down that role and um robin van Persie speaks about it in the podcast uh again i listened to the high performance podcast by jake humphrey and it's a brilliant podcast and uh any young person out there just just give it uh, a listen to you you um you'll learn glimpses and nuggets but uh robin van Persie says when he got to uh when he left um, Bayern, they got to Arsenal. Um, the people, um, the reason why I wasn't playing well was the, the people who uh, he was surrounded with. Mm-hmm. So again, they wanted to go out. Uh, they don't want to put the, um, they don't want footballers. Um, they wanted to go out. They wanted to do the wrong things. Uh, yeah, and it, it wasn't um, that type of um, environment he wanted to be in. Again, that takes real self-reflection and uh, strong courage. Like, do you know what? Um, I love you guys. You guys are my friends. But again, that's not the road I want to go down to. And it's very hard. But again, it comes down within yourself. No one else is going to do that but yourself. Totally agree. Totally agree with you. Um, and, I, and I back up them words in terms of the High Performance Podcast. is a great podcast to listen to. So if any of our listeners are on here and they want to listen to a podcast, that, that'll develop them. Um, it's the High Performance. Um, is Jake Humphrey? Is, yeah. Jake. Yeah, he's the BT, BT presenter. Brilliant. Yeah. 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 Brilliant yeah. podcast. So yeah, yeah. great on that. And I, and I totally, and I listen to the one where... Um, Robin, Va- the Robin Van Persie one, where he was talking about his child and how his yeah. child was blaming everybody for his for his ne- for his loot from losing and things like that. And yeah. then, and then yeah. he stopped the car, pulled it over, and he was like, "Listen, I love you, son. I love you to pieces. I'll always back you, but you're talking like a loser because you talk, you blame <laughs> everybody else, but but yourself." And he's like, yeah. "Self-reflecting." And and what I got from that was self-reflection so important. So it's like, don't yeah. blame the external. Look internal, and how can you adapt to the external to be better? Um, yeah. and, and that was brilliant advice to anybody so I'm glad you mentioned that because hopefully yeah. these listeners can um, understand that if they can just self-reflect don't blame anybody else and just look at your standards and then change yourself and you'll be a success whatever success is you'll yeah. be because um, you'll adapt yeah. to the environment in terms of the barriers you face in your career how what barriers have they been and, and, and how have you overcome them um there's um again you get reject lots of rejection. Um, I've applied for roles, uh, which I got rejected by. Um, again, um, I didn't. I school I done well, but um, it wasn't to the best of um what I thought I could be. And then um again is just taking yourself back and be like, okay, I didn't do it. Uh, what I wanted to get, I uh, I didn't get it. Um, what's my next route? What's my next step? Um, don't don't stand still. Because uh, once you start standing still, when you get comfortable, that's when you go back. So I just adjust. Um, a lot of people think, um, firstly, se- being successful in life, it determines to what you think success is. And then secondly, um, it's not a straight line, uh, being successful, but it's non-linear. So there is a lot of different journeys. You, uh, one day you have a good day, one day you have a bad day, but is realising that within yourself. Um, um, yeah. No, that's- Again... Again, it's finding that that person you can talk to, to finding your mentor. And uh, when you have a setback, okay, um, I didn't get this. How can oh, how can I um, be better for next time? And not just always self reflect and ask yourself questions. Yeah, no, that's brilliant. Um, and in terms of mentors for the young people that are listening, that could be potentially obviously their parents, the guardians, the grandparents. It could be a cousin, yeah. it could be a brother or sister. Yeah. Um, it could yeah. be a friend. It could be yeah. obviously a teacher. Yeah, it could be your school counselor. It yeah. could be uh, the person. Uh, uh, at your church, your mosque, your synagogue. Um, it, it literally, it can be anyone, but 
that good person has to have good intentions and uh, has to be a good person where he he wants the best, he or she wants the best for you. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. T- totally agree with that. And that's, re- that's really valuable advice um, to share because I think people um, sometimes try to do, and, and this has been a common theme, I think people try to sometimes do it a lot by themselves without expressing and communicating what they're struggling with. And I think you make things big, like especially issues, you make them bigger than they are in your head. When then, when, once you've expressed them and you've communicated them to somebody, they'll, you'll realise that's nothing that I can easily solve that. Um, so I think it's really important, like you've said, to communicate. Communication's key um, to doing anything in life. And don't be, don't hold anything in, good and bad. Make sure you speak to someone nice and calmly and express your views, and and then you can you'll be given support regardless of what that is. Um, yeah. No, that's brilliant, Abdul. Thank you very much. In terms of how would you describe yourself in three words and your character, what would that be? Oh, <laughs> um, I would say uh, I like to show empathy. So as in, uh, um, I care about myself. Mm-hmm. Uh, I care about the people around me. I care about the work I do. Um, another, another one is uh, I'm a bubbly. Uh, I've got a bubbly personality, but I don't want people to mistake my bubbliness for I'm too jokey or I'm too. Um, I don't take things seriously. Um, I'm very aware of that, and um, um, I show I show my uh, my bubbly side by uh, always looking after the best interests of people. So again, offer them a cup of tea or coffee and uh, make them feel the best way they can. Mm-hmm. Uh, another one for me is uh, work hard, but not only work hard, but work smart. Yeah. So make sure you, any task you're doing uh, is correct, because if you don't do it, then uh, you're wasting your time and you've got to come back and do it again. And um, lastly, um, I try to take 100% responsibility. I try to not give no excuses to anyone. Uh, what I can control in my life, I will control. Uh, and everything else will fall into place. Uh, you can't control everything, you know? So again, I just don't, don't, if you want to go to the gym and you want to go three times a week, go. You know, if, if your friends don't want to come with you, then you go by yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you want to volunteer, again, make sure you get in touch with the person. Um, give, them, give, them, uh, give them a bell, ask them, I want to volunteer. Can I come in on certain days? You take responsibility 100% and don't ever give excuses to anyone. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. That's um, great advice again. And just to um, go back on that, one of my unofficial mentors who was kind of like, one of my line managers slightly used to always say to me, control the controllables. Um, yeah. and that's it. He said, you control the controllables, you make sure that's correct as best you can be, everything else falls in place. Um, and that's exactly yeah. what you said with the gym story and things like that. Really Definitely, fun. just like yourself. You got in touch with Neil and then you, you got to hit targets and you're like, you know what? I want to see if you can help me out. And then two weeks, three weeks later, you got um, you started a podcast with um, three guests from the Premier League. Yes. And then boom, you're, you're on your way to achieving your... KPIs again is yeah. you taking ownership and responsibility. Yeah, yeah. and hundred percent. And, and going back on the empathy, I'm hoping that this um, everything that we're doing today passes on. If it changes one young person's mentality, um, it's done its job. That's it. If it hits hundred people and it hit, and it changes one person's mentality, it's done its job. Um, and that's what these are all for because that's what we're here to do. That's my role. Yeah. It's your role. That's the badge we're representing. Um, the role is to positively impact people's lives. And and if this does it. We've, we've done it um, and yeah. we keep going. So, no, thank you for that. Um, yeah. In terms of three, what do you feel are three key, key skills and qualities people need to be successful in their professional lives and why? You briefly mentioned them, but what, what would you say the three non negotiables if we're going on a high performance podcast? <laughs> <laughs> if we do a high performance podcast, yeah, what's yeah. the three non negotiable skills or qualities that you need to be like just to develop and improve and be a success? Uh... Uh, be a champion uh, at home. So um, you know, to your brothers, sisters, guardians, siblings, your friends, um, uh, which leads into uh, taking 100% responsibility of uh, being on time, getting the school bag ready, to uh, um, revising, to uh, just just look at yourself in the mirror and be like, do you know what? I gave my best. And uh, whatever outcome, I've tried my best. And uh, last one uh, is uh, empathy. Uh, a lot of people have um, opinions and ideas on uh, social media and are quick to uh, criticise, but you don't know how it is to feel an other person's shoe. Uh, and again, um, opinion, in my opinion, uh, opinion is the uh, lowest form of knowledge, where it's again, you just think of yourself and you say it, but did you put a research? Did you uh, read? Um, did you ask that person? Um, you don't know how they feel, you know? So again, show, show empathy. Yeah, no, brilliant advice. And um a lot about focus on focus on you and understand yeah. what other people are going through and understand that um, just because it looks a certain way might not be the actual truth. Um, yeah. 
and, 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 and do your research and, and, and look into that. That's, that's really good. And, and the hard work always stays. And I always remember when I was youngster, um, and David, it was David Beckham, actually, he said a quote on an interview. I watched just a random interview. And he went, somebody asked him, what, what's the one thing that he's consistent with? And they, I think they were expecting a, um, a football answer or something like that. He said, I always <laughs> make sure my, my clothes are ready the night before. And that always yeah. put me. So every, every, once I watched that, my uniform was always ready the night before. And, he, and they were yeah. like, why? And he was like, because then I was ready for the day. Because he was like, I yeah. wouldn't wake up and worry about getting ready. I was done. I'd get up and I'd go to my um, closet and I'd pick my clothes out straight away. So And I was like, something so simple. Start your day off right. Um, yeah. And then it's one less stress. And, and it, yeah. it, um, it always stuck with me that. Or, and that's very similar to what you're saying. Yeah, definitely. Um, the night before, I've got a notepad. Uh, I'll write down what um, my tasks are for the next days mm-hmm. or for, for the week. And um, I always try to get a good night's sleep in. So about half nine, ten, uh, in bed, getting ready. Because um, sleep is very important. Uh, if I don't get my sleep, then I feel like I don't start uh, ready for the next day. So again, guys, remember, sleep. Make sure you're sleeping early. Yeah, no, great advice. Yeah. And even, even from that preparation, just preparation's key. Regardless of what that's for, whether it's for your exams, whether it's for assignments, whether it's school, whether it's your personal life and you like the gym, whether it's a football yeah. match, preparation, preparation, preparation is key. Because sometimes I feel that um, people work towards the outcome without any steps in place. I think yeah. especially for young people, it's really important to see what the outcome is and then get the steps in place, work backwards. So go right and do mm. A, B and C to get the, yeah. get the D and E. I think that's really yeah. important advice for them to understand. Yeah. Um, and finally, Abdul, thank you very much for your time. It's been really, really key. Um, looking back, if you could offer some words of wisdom or advice to your younger self um, with everything that you know now and the experiences you went through, what would you say to your 16-year-old self? Um, enjoy the moment. Uh, enjoy the failures in life. Well, yeah. um, I fail a lot. I, I fail a lot, but I don't take it as failures. I take it as uh, uh, life lessons and... Um, um, how can I improve? Um, another one as well is um, I want to rush. I want to get to that step. Where I want to be in this role by this time. I want to, and then it's like when I was sixteen, I was like, um, by eighteen, I have to drive. This, I have to drive. By nineteen, I drive this car. I want to live. I want to live in this house. But you, you don't know how life is, um, will be like. You know, um, who predicted will be in this kind of um, pandemic? No one. So again, uh, just uh, enjoy the ride. Take it easy. Uh, make sure you have a good mentor. Uh, and just learn every day. Learn. Try to read as much as you can. I try and take nuggets of everyone. You know, uh, I like this character. Uh, Ristics from someone. I'll take this from you. I'll take this from you. And then try to mold it into your own personality. Mm-hmm. No, that's brilliant. I love the uh, the life advice, and I and I love the fact that you just said there. Um, don't fear failure. I don't mm. know what like. And I used to be the same. I used to be. I used to be quite afraid of failure when I was younger. But in my teenage years, some, uh, uh, somebody told me that what the failure is the route to success. You meant to fail, mm. um, and I and I took that on because we were like, "How are you meant to be a success if you're not meant to mess up stuff to learn?" Um, mm. And I and I was like, "Hundred percent right." And Jazz, this is what I want to say as well: is don't fear what other people think, because yeah. what other people think, they're not they don't think what you're thinking, and your idea could be brilliant. So if you've got a business plan, or you want to start up something, or you want to you want to do this kind of charity, just do it. The the process is in place. Um, it's easy, but it's hard to do. So again, if you want to um do like a business plan, for example, uh, do, your, do your research, who's in the best at the field at it, um, try to emulate what they're doing and put your own stamp, and then thirdly, th- just do it yeah. and then see where it takes you because um, more, more than not, it will take you far. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. And there's, there's always that famous quote or something along the lines of, at first people will laugh at you and then, and then they'll ask you how you've done it. So um, always, always keep your, um, keep your dreams and work at them. Even if you go home after school yeah. or after college or after work or whatever, and it's five till nine, just work on your dreams because they will come true. You've just got to put your own effort in. Totally, totally. Yeah. Thank you for that, Abdul. It's been brilliant talking to you. Um, the life advice has been brilliant. I hope our listeners have taken something positive from that. Um, and I'm hoping that this is a this is a podcast that they listen to maybe in the next week, in the next six months, in the next year, in the next two years, whenever they need a bit of inspiration, this has been a, a brilliant one for them to listen to. So thank you very much for your time. I appreciate that. The pleasure is mine. Thank you for having me. Thank you, Abdul.